Welcome back, rookies, to part three of our video series about buying land to put a tidy slash small prefabricated modular home on it for Airbnb. If you're just joining us, you can find the links to the previous videos in the description below. I recommend checking them out after this video to see our journey up until this point. You'll also get some tips on what to look out for before purchasing land in rural areas such as the desert, especially if you plan to either build or put a prefab home on it for your short-term rental. Now, in this video, I'll tell you about how we found a prefab company to work with and even show you some footage of us visiting their factory. During the same time, we also had to start prepping the land to fulfill certain requirements for the permitting process. I'll discuss that in a follow-up video, so be sure to subscribe to be notified when I post it. If you have any questions or any ideas for other videos you want me to do, please don't hesitate in leaving a comment below. Also, go ahead and click on that like button to support me in bringing you more content like this. It honestly helps so much for a small channel like mine to continue to grow. With that being said, let's get into it. After purchasing the land, we began researching to find the best prefab companies to work with. Being that we were in California, I felt pretty confident that we would find a company rather quickly. After all, most of these really cool and cutting edge prefab companies are located here, right? Well, we quickly learned that many of these companies were really not affordable, and some of them were even more expensive than doing a traditional stick build home. Not to mention, a lot of their designs were a bit too modern for the vibe we were going for in the desert. While it's very exciting, to see some of the nifty prefab homes coming out of California, the reality is they're expensive even before customizing them how you want. However, that's not to say that these companies aren't fully embracing the benefits of building prefab, particularly when it comes to energy efficiency, smart home technology, expedited build time. It all depends on what your goals are and what you're willing and able to spend. In fact, we did come across some companies with more affordable models, but this was because they were using plans that were pre-approved by the county and not able to be customized. A pre-approved plan basically means that the county or city has already approved these blueprints or designs designs. Obviously, a major benefit of this is it helps your ability to get a permit and start building. You won't need to go through the supposedly long process of revisions until your home design eventually gets approved. The flip side of this is generally these pre-approved plans tend to be more generic. Being that more and more people are looking for unique type experiences with Airbnbs and short-term rentals, this is the direction we plan to take and we're excited to create in designing our modular home, which would be tougher to accomplish using a pre-approved plan. In our case, part of this unique design includes packing as much as we can into a small small slash tiny home of around 800 square feet or less. Most of these pre-approved plans for that size included one bedroom and one bathroom, and if it was a two bedroom, it only had one bath. We definitely knew we wanted to have at least two bedrooms and two bathrooms packed into our home. This is also because many couples vacation together, so it's important that they have their own bathrooms. We also want to be able to have a loft space, possibly for kids or for more sleeping quarters. After realizing we wouldn't be able to find a California company to suit our needs, we started considering looking for companies out of the state. Even if this meant incurring shipping costs, simply because the prices were still much more affordable. After much research, we came across a company being recommended by someone in the comments section of a review of another prefab company. Side note, we also found our dog breeder this way, and she was amazing. Speaking of, if you have any prefab companies that you want to recommend, go ahead and leave them in the comments section here. Now, because we have yet to complete the build, I'm going to go ahead and refrain from revealing the company that we're working with. But if all goes well, you'll find out soon enough. Perhaps at a later date, I will post it in the description section of this video. So go ahead and take a look to see if it's there yet. I was a big fan of the home design on their website. But I was worried that if we started to customize the design, it would heavily increase the prices that we were seeing leaving us at yet another dead end. But I went ahead and called them anyway. And to my surprise, one of the main architects at the company answered the phone. He was able to thoroughly answer all of my questions regarding customizing the home and how it would affect the price. He explained how all the models on their website were mainly used as a starting point, and they generally customize each home to their customers' needs. And more importantly, customizing would not directly increase the price. The price would be affected more by the materials we chose to use for things like exterior or interior finishes, as well as how big or small we chose to build the home, which we had more control over. He also let me know if we were to come visit the factory, they would cover all costs associated with the visit, up to $1,000 as a credit if we decide to build with them. I took him up on that offer and booked a flight within a few months of that call. They wanted me to come and the homes they were currently building would be at a better stage to show. Here is some footage of that trip, of the tour we got looking at some of the builds they were working on. The middle one is a custom model. And then we got a floor system we just started, so you get to see how we build our patented floor system. That's a travel trailer, so that would be something that... This one here? The one in the back corner. Oh, that's a travel so trailer. So that's a travel trailer, so that's something we mean you could pull out a pickup truck. For oh. all of these park models, you need a semi to pull. You can listen here to the company owner talking about their patented floor design, which I'm clearly very impressed by in the video. Because I know it'll not only help keep the home insulated better, but also protect it from some of the elements and critters out in the desert specifically. Not only that, but you will hear him say how it is versatile enough 
to be tied to a foundation or removed on wheels. So we got a combination of steel and wood. So a couple things this does. Number one, it gives us an extremely strong foundation for the home. So we're able to ship it 2,000 miles or whatever. And if it's drywalled on the inside, we're not gonna have to worry with drywall cracking. So it'll all be fully sheeted underneath. So bugs, termites, nothing can get up in the floor structure. No air infiltration can get in this structure. Gives us a safe place for all our duct work if we need it, our plumbing, all of that. And of course for us in, in the cold climate, that's important because now we have a conditioned space. We're not worried about anything freezing. If I have a totally sealed floor system, yeah. whether it's minus 20 or 120, we still don't want that heat coming up in here because then it's going to keep this floor really hot in the summer and the air conditioner going to have to work hard. So well, that's what's so amazing about doing it, you know, in factory because you can, yeah. make, you can have control of those things. 100%. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to worry about it snowing or rain so we can kind of build everything inside out. This one's getting all spray foam, so it'll all get spray foamed on the inside. So again, 100% coverage for insulation. Pipes will go in there and then we'll go ahead and sheet the floor, which will then turn out like this over here. But now this floor is sheeted. You can see the tires underneath. Wow. And we're ready for walls. So you can see all the plumbing stubbed up, the bathrooms, the kitchens, and all that stuff. This floor system not only passed for RV park model, but it also passed that if somebody wanted to do this as a permanent dwelling, that the floor system passed IRC compliance. Holy, so I could put it there then so on the could, foundation. So you could put it there, and if you ever wanted to move it move again, it. you could put the hitch back on. And then I could always take it off if I wanted to. How do I get it out of the foundation though? There really isn't it just, a foundation. It just sits on it. Just sits, so it'll, this passes for a permanent dwelling home. And the bottom of this would just sit down at that concrete level. You will see they are working on two tiny homes on wheels, as well as one tiny slash small home being built to be put on a foundation, which is our goal. Park model RV, 400 square feet. Okay. Yeah. a living room addition out here so this is why the, the kitchen's so big. Another, another module. Another module out there. Yeah, I wouldn't do this high of a ceiling in this small of a space but it's kind of cool. Oh stack washer and dryer right here yeah, so we right could there. do that. Yeah, it's pretty efficient to do it in the hallway. This is really light because it's park model, right? Yeah. Quartz. Quartz, is it? Yeah. Okay. So this is really interesting because we have this, it has to be eight foot six wide to meet DOT regulations. So this indent here allows this deck to fold up while it's being transported. This window is perfect. You got a bigger window than this if you wanted to. This way you get the total view. Total view, yeah, the picture windows are amazing. You'd be surprised how not claustrophobic you feel up there. So this model is completely off-grid. You got the solar set, battery set up, composting toilet. And this is your full solar set, the battery packs and all that. This is your composting toilet right here. This would be a half bath. Pretty much the smallest you get for a shower. This is a 30 inch shower. Now what is this? This is a wood burning heater. We're gonna experiment with it, with it outside to see if it actually heats the whole space. We're off to the what? Grand finale. Welcome. Wow. Got a window slash door. Yep, a little hobbit door here. You know, just be careful, there's no railings out here yet. So this will be a spiral staircase right by the front door. So still again, enough to have a couple chairs, chill up here, check out the views. 
The trip is only supposed to be an introduction to seeing some of their homes in person and getting an idea of their process. Clearly, you could hear how excited I was to see their work. So, after touring the homes, we jumped right into designing our home with that same architect I spoke with on the phone. We started drawing it out on a piece of loose leaf paper. Kitchen over here, you have your sink here, window over here your electric fireplace here, and then you have windows on either side of the fireplace. Maybe you put the fireplace here and then you have sliding doors here. We could here. put the fireplace in the corner because right. that's unusable anyway. Bathroom's here, you got your toilet here. This is where the loft is above this one or this is the upper patio? It could be either or. Doors Maybe going out to either, either side. That's awesome. Yeah. They stayed well into the evening as we cranked out our first drafted plan, then moved on to inputting it into their computer design program, which we used to eventually print out our first drafted blueprint. I like that layout a lot. 655, we're, wow, look at that. we're near our target. Holy cow. All right, let's print that one. See what we just did here. Right hot off the press. Right, exactly, so you have that here, so you can still see out in the sliding doors. Then we have the master bedroom on this side. How many square feet is this? 600, I believe. They were incredibly generous with their time. Very hard workers and the epitome of what you would want to see in a small business. We still wanted to do a bit more research about prefab before moving forward, especially since we were building on raw land. We wanted to make sure it was all still possible. This led us to learn a lot more about what we still needed to do before committing to starting the build, as well as some other information we discovered about the land we plan to build on. Stay tuned, and I will explain this in the next video as we continue this journey together of what it takes to put a prefab home on raw land for your vacation rental.